Good afternoon, Gov. Um, in this presentation, I'll be sharing this project we did with PGC Mindanao, along with uh, volunteers and scientists from around the world. And um, this might be helpful for protecting Davao from the surge that has happened in Manila. I don't know if um, you have a lot of friends in Manila Gov, but I've worked there for 10 years. So I have, I made a lot of friends there. And last month was very concerning because suddenly, like maybe more than 15 of my friends got COVID. I found out that they had COVID and actually five of them had to be brought to the hospital. Thankfully, uh, three already got out of the hospital, two are still in the hospital. So it's, it's very concerning because like suddenly, you know, it's like, it's everywhere. So it's not only the numbers, it is not just numbers for me, like the search in Manila. I mean, I know people who are, who are affected by this. Um, so um, now it's like, the question is like, what could we do to help? And particularly for us, me and the people in PGC, I mean, we are not frontliners, but we are involved in this technology called genomics. And we see what rich countries are doing. For instance, in the UK and the US, they not only test whether the, the people are positive or negative in, with COVID-19, they do genetic sequencing of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes this disease. And so, because we knew that from the beginning, because I mean, me, I'm, I'm from this world. Um, so last year, we started this project. So me, along with uh, volunteers from around the world, we uh, came together in this platform called um, Just One Giant Lab based in France. They are an open science platform. So you could propose projects and then based on the community of scientists, you know, they, they could help you with their expertise and also funding. So thankfully, we were given fun funding uh, last year, and then we partnered with PGC Mindanao to bring the equipment and the chemicals needed to sequence this virus. And, you know, thankfully we, PGC you know, was able to do that last, last March 9. Um, that was the first part of the project. Um, the second part is actually, so, so now how do we make this useful for our community? Now that we have brought this technology to, um, to Davao. So this is, uh, this is Mitch Bacos, one of the, um, the lead uh, scientists there in the wet lab of PGC Mindanao. And this was a significant achievement, Gov, um, because this was the first time that SARS-CoV-2 was sequenced, enabled by an international volunteer team. Normally it's, you know, like institutions or countries that fund this. And also this is the first sequencing of any organism in Mindanao Philippines. So this is historic. In fact, um, CNN is planning to come here this, uh, this May because you know, they, they, they think they wanna do a story about um, uh, this project. So this, and you know, this, this, this is also nice. This is a nice story as well because this is a collaboration of many people around the world. So we're very grateful for all the scientists here, you can see um, who trained us and all our partner institutions and, um, you know, and donations from companies. And yeah, so many, so many people helped us. And then our project team was a huge team as well. So many people contributed to make this happen, uh, Gov. So yeah, we're, but you know, we have shown that this is possible. So if and a volunteer team, you know, who never met each other, we just worked through the internet, could make this happen, you know, this this is very possible to bring 
to the you know to labs across the you know developing world so why do we sequence so gov we are we are in a war right now and you know we, we couldn't win this war if we don't have intel about our enemy so the intel that we could get from genetic sequencing of SARS-CoV-2 for instance is like for the LGUs we could with that with that intelligence we could know we could help LGUs know how the virus is entering its borders what is the source so that the LGUs could have a more um, what you call it, precise response to the virus to the pandemic and then the hospitals this could help hospitals as well reduce hospital hospital acquired infections by knowing as well you know what are the sources of infections and for vaccine administrations just in case uh, some variants beat some vaccines and this is a fear of scientists you know we will need to know what variants are circulating in the area of vaccine administration so so that we know what vaccines to administer there so if like one variant is you know it's like well a vaccine is not compatible with a certain variant so we use another vaccine so that's the idea here so that's not yet we don't hear news yet of that happening but just in case just in case that happens we want to be ready so why is this possible now? So just a few years ago, the sequencer, sequencing machine used to cost millions of pesos. This one particular one is around like six to eight million. But the one the, the sequencer we're using is only 40,000 pesos. Now it's like even cheaper than an iPhone. So, and this is consumable. So practically it's like you're, the, the, there's a cost per, Per sample, and this amount is actually consumable. So it's practically zero capital cost, especially for a well-equipped lab like PGC Mindanao. So, Gov, um, you know the reason we're doing this is really simple, it's because because you know we want to contribute to fighting this pandemic. We all have our families. This is uh, one side of my family. And you know, I'm hoping that if we could start this in Davao, it would also spread in the different uh, regions. Um, I'm from Cebu and most of my family are in Cebu. So I'm hoping that if we are able to do this in Davao, the other regions will see what we're doing and they would follow suit. We could help also help them and we could protect all our families